Welcome back to another Action Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to set up basic tiles and slopes. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in our little minimal scene here. You can see I have a player set up that we want to put on the scene, but we need some tiles for it to run around on. So in order to do that, we're going to go down here to scenes, and you can see if I open this folder, I have one game scene right now. You can think of these folders as the tabs for those of you that are coming from Pixel Game Maker. So if you remember, you had a resource tab, you had an objects tab, an animations tab, tiles, and then your scenes. And so what you'd usually do for a tile set is you would add the tile in this resource here, kind of like this, and then you would go to tiles, and then you would make a tile set with that resource. And then you would go to the scene, you would add it to your scene, and then you were able to place your tiles. So instead of having these top tabs right here, the easiest way to think about it if you're coming from this engine is to think about it as folders. So now you have an objects folder, you have a scenes folder. And so as you could imagine, if we're going to add a tile set, we're going to want a tiles folder. All right. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene. I'm going to press this plus right here, go to game scene. And then right away, I'm going to save it. And I'm going to make sure that I save it in my scenes folder. And I'm just going to call it game scene two and save. Now, when I make a scene like this, I want to go to scene transition. I want to drag it out here. And then I want to make it the new initial set scene. So that's how we do that. All right. So now with my scene selected, I'm on the part where I can edit it if I want. Now we need to add some tiles. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add the sprites of the tiles. So I'm going to create a new folder. This is going to be for the sprites or uh, images, you could call it. And I'm going to open that up, select this folder, and then I'm going to bring in the images that I want. I want these two images for the tiles. I'm going to bring them in just like this. They will import correctly. And the only thing that I need to do is rename them. So this is going to be the main tiles. And then this one up here will be like a background sort of tile. All right, so I have my sprites imported now to make a tile set. There's a couple different ways to do it. I'll show both ways. So the first way, the way that I kind of prefer doing it is right here, I'll create a new and I'll create a new tile set. From here, I'm just going to save it. I'm going to call these one the main tiles. And then now we can just click on this and we can start to add tiles. Over down here, you can click on plus and you're going to click on Atlas. And then you're going to choose from the one of the sprites that you have. So in this case, I'm going to do the main tiles. I'm going to click OK. It's going to ask what size they are. These ones are in fact 24 by 24. Otherwise, you would change the size and then you click yes. So here it says collision to set up automatically. You can click yes on this or uncheck it and click yes. I'm just gonna set it up automatically, but I'll show you how to customize collision as well. I'm gonna click yes on this. And now you can see that we have a tile set image. Now we can add more. If you click this plus button, we could add another atlas of these background tiles and we could also apply these as well. So I'm gonna add this one to this just to show you that we can bounce back and forth like this. But the first thing that we need to do when we're setting up tiles and the main things that you need to know is that you need to set up the collisions and whether things are slopes. And so how you do that is you can go to select right here and then you can go down here and then you can pick on one of these. And you can see first off a lot of different options. You've got animations, you've got rendering, terrains, miscellaneous. The only things I'm gonna really show today is how to set up slopes and collisions on these tiles. So for example, with this one selected, you go down to physics. And then you can see that the collision is already set up because I said to automatically set it up. Now, if you wanted to get rid of it, you can just hit C on your keyboard and it will clear it. You can press F and it will bring it back on. So you can just go through all of these. Now, the other cool thing is, is you can grab a lot of these and press C and you will clear the physics, the collisions on all of them. Or you can press F and give them all. So that is real quickly how you set up collisions. There's other options right here. If you want to get very specific, you can also add more points. So if you click on this one right here, you can add another point right here. And then you can uh, bring in that point when you click on edit points and bring in that point. You can make different shapes with it. So you're not just limited to square or things like this. You can actually add more points and make your polygons. Now I'm going to clear this one and then hit F and it's going to give me a full one again. 
And now we're, I'm going to show you how to do slopes. Okay. So with physics layer closed, you can go down here to one of these slopes. And when I click on one, we're going to go to wall collision. And then right here, it says is slope. And then you click on this and you'll see a checkbox. And then you'll see other ones without a checkbox. And so for each slope, you want to make sure that it is checked. And you can grab multiple. I think you can control click. You can shift click multiple ones. So you could just select them all with shift click. And then you could, that looks like I got them all. And then you can click on slope. And then they will all be toggled as a slope. Now this is important for using actions. If I go to the player. I can see that one of the conditions we have, if I open this up, is contact with slope. Let me see where it's at right here. Slope contact. So if the tile is tagged slope, that is the only way that this slope contact will take effect. So that is one reason why it's so important to set up your slopes correctly. So I had a double click here to get this screen back up. Sometimes you'll find it down on the bottom. You just could click tile set and it will also pop back up. So now that we've set up our slopes correctly, we've tagged them correctly, but we haven't set up their physics correctly. So now what you do is you go to here back to the physics, and now we need to set them up for slope. So the easiest way to do is just to give a full collision. And then in this case, we only need a triangle. We actually don't need this fourth one. So what you can do is sometimes you have to move this or else it gets stuck on here but you can right click this point and it will delete it. And then you can left click this one and drag it down to right there. And that's gonna make the perfect slope uh, for this tile anyway. And then I'm gonna click on this one. Now this one is a little different. This one we can not actually use all four points. You can see that it's getting stuck on that thing again. So then I'm gonna drag this down here and boom. Now we have a smooth slope that is associated with both these tiles. So then this one, I'm gonna do this one again, except for this one, I bring this down. This one, I press F5, I get rid of this one by right clicking, and then I drag this one. Yeah, this is a kind of a Godot thing where it gets stuck right here. Hopefully that can get fixed someday. And then right here, and then you can see that we could just set up all these just like we need to. So this one, I just right click and boom, it's set up. That's kind of nice. Right click, boom. And then these ones are really steep. And I, I will show these ones because there are, you can add physics and for example, when you climb the slope, it looks like you're going slower. So let's do this one and add this right here. All right, so all my slopes are set up and now we can start to tile. But actually before I forgot to set up these ones, so F, F, F. All right, so now we're all set up. So now we're gonna to go to a tile layer and it's these ones with these icons right here. They're like an isometric grid shape. And you can actually add as many as you want. You can right click, add a node. You can click on tile layer, tile map layer, and you can add it. And so this is kind of nice because you can add as many as you want. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and just use the ones that come with a scene. And particularly, I'll just click on the uh, base layer right here. And what we're gonna see over here is we have a tile set option. And so you can do a couple things. You can drag this right here and it will set up right here. I'm gonna clear this. Now you can see another way I could do is I can quick load and then I can just type in the one that I want. So I could say main tiles and there it is and I can open it and now it sets it like that. And then there's gonna be one more way I'll show you later. This is another alternative way to add a tile set. And so now we can start to paint. So I'm gonna zoom out here and you can see that we have this grid right here. Now, I'm going to recommend that when you're making your games, this is just how I do it on my games, is I try to stay in this grid only. So all my stuff kind of goes in this grid. And the reason why is because you can see the numbers right here, they go negative X going this way, they go positive X going this way, and this way goes negative Y going up, and this way is just negative on everything. Well, when you're doing some calculations, you want the X and the Y to be at least predictable. And so this is why in Pixel Game Maker, it starts at zero and zero, and then Y's go down, and then X's go this way. And that is so that all your math is predictable. 
So now I'm going to scroll in here and we'll just kind of stay right here still in the scene. And we're going to start to paint. So you'll notice that a new option down here called tile map popped up. So you have your tile set. This is where you set the tiles like their settings. So think about it as tile settings. And then tile map is where you paint. So tile mapping. All right. That's the easiest way to remember it. And so you can see that we have access to all the tile sets that we make. And so one tile set can actually contain a lot of tiles if you want, if you like it organized like that. One way I've seen it organized is you have your ground tiles and you have your wall tiles, you have your object tiles and things like this. So when you're ready to paint, you can just click on the tile that you want. You can click this pencil tool right here. You notice that we have the rectangle tool, the paint tool, and all the tools that you normally have. And then you can start to paint. So we'll just go like this and I will make a line like that. If you hold, you can obviously handle more than one tile and click them. If you want to delete a tile, you can right click it. That will delete it. If you want to copy a tile and use that one, you press control click and then you can copy that tile. So I think in PGM, you would just right click and it would copy it. This time you have to control left click and that's what copies it. And so then we'll just uh, set up this other ramp here. Uh, let's copy this one and add a little thing like that. Now let's copy these two and go like this. Up the hill we go and then boom, just do something like that so we can just gauge that. And so now if we want to test this, we can just go to the object root node here. We can click right click and hit instantiate scene. And then we want the player. If you have a lot on here, you can just type in player and it will pop up. Hit enter, boom, you got one. Now, one nice thing here is you can see we don't have a grid yet. So I'm going to hit shift G and it's going to pop up a grid. You can configure the grid right here. You can configure the, the uh, snap right here. This was just my liking for it. And then you can drag your player around and it will snap on the grid right here. Another way that you can move your player is you can have it selected or select it right here. If it's not on the screen, you can right click and say move here and it will move right there. It's very nice. Also, if the object is off the screen, if you have it selected and then you move your mouse back out here and press F, it will go to the player. If you press F in here, it won't. But if you press F right here, it will. So that's pretty nice, actually. So let's move this guy or girl right here. And then we will uh, play test and see how the collisions work. And we can't see anything. And that is because we have not set up the camera. This is a good thing to go over here. Click on the initial camera right here. We want to have a target path. We're going to add and assign the player. Again, we can just type player right here. And OK. And now we should be able to see the player. There we go. And we're going to go down. And you can see that it goes up and down the slopes. And you can see that there's a little slowness to them now, which is really cool. Okay, so that is how you set up just your basic tiles, how you add collisions, and then how you make sure that they're slopes. All right, so now I'm gonna make a tile set. So we're gonna add a tile map layer. Now, if I make it above the base where I put this tile set, it's going to show above it. If I put it like this, it's going to show below it. So anything that is above the node, so all these nodes up here are going to show below the tile set if the visibility is set to zero or the same, I should say. What I mean by that is you can go over here, you can go to ordering. Okay, it's called ordering. And then you can move the Z index like this. But if everything is set to zero, then the one that is the lowest on the list is going to show first. So that's just how you can think of it. Micro control it with ordering, but if everything's zero, it's just going to go in the order of the nodes. Okay, so on this tile map layer, I'm going to create a new a tile set in a new way. And so what you can do is you can click on this and you can click new tile set. Now this is just going to be a generic name, and what this does is it creates a tile set resource. So it's it's creating one of these, but it's actually only residing it in this tile map layer. So that's one reason why I like doing this way because it's more clear of what tile resources you have. This one's a little more vague, but you do have a tile set resource associated with this layer. And I'll show you some troubles that can run into it and how to solve those in a minute here. 
But what you can do is now that you have it selected, you can see that you have this tile set tab down here. Now you can add a tile. So let's add, let's just add the background ones on this one. Okay. It wants you to set it up. I'm just going to say yes to that. And let's add no collisions because I just want the player to kind of walk through it and things like this. I'm going to hit okay on this. Now, this is where it gets a little interesting. So you still need to set up your tiles correctly. In this case, we don't have anything that needs collision except for maybe this part. If it was closed, I will, there's an open version and this is the one I'll be using for the tutorial. So I don't need any uh, collision or slope tags on them. So quite easily, it's all ready to go. I can go to tile map right here and I can grab this and I can say select, let's just select this half right here. Actually, no, let's select this half right here. And let's put it right here, okay? Now, let's say the other half, though, I want to show above the player. So I could do this. And one way that you could do it easily is you can go like this and you can duplicate this tile layer, okay? And now it has that same text resource. The only thing that you need to keep in mind here is that this is sharing the same resource. So even though it looks generic, the fact that you duplicated it means that it will share a resource. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So remember, I duplicated this tile map layer two, okay? And now I'm gonna go into tile layer two, and I'm gonna go into tile sets, and I'm going to select, the, uh, just say this tile right here, and I'm going to give it a collision layer, okay? I'm gonna press F on it. Now I'm going to go to tile map layer one, and see its tile set, and notice that it took the same thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit C to clear it, okay? And now it's also going to be clear on tile layer two. Even though it looks like a generic resource of a tile set, it's pointing to the same tile set that is just not in your hierarchy. Again, that's one reason why I like these Trez files is to very clearly know what my tile sets are. Now, there is a way around this, for example, and that is you can select this tile set two. You can go right here and you can say make unique. And so if I make this one unique, this resource is now only pointing to this tile map layer two and is no longer associated with map layer one or this tile map layer one. And now I can show you that I can press F on this and apply this collision. And then if I click on tile map layer and I click on this one, you can see that it is now not taking that collision. So just know that if you are duplicating with generic tile sets and you need something specific on that tile set, you need to make it unique. I, I hope that's the best way I can explain it right now. And hopefully that made sense. But now let's finish up tiling this thing. What I want this to do is I want this to show above the player. So I'm actually going to grab this and I'm going to put it over the player. And then I'm going to go to mapping and I'm going to take this, the rest of it, and I'm going to apply it like this, okay? Now I'm gonna take my player, I'm going to move the node right here, and when we play test, you can hit F5 to play test. We should be able to walk in front of this last one and then behind the other one, so it looks like you're walking into a door. Awesome. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, you can comment below or go to my Discord where I'll be answering questions during the beta. And so with that said, I'll see you at the next video.